We're joined in studio by Thousand Yard Rusher. I'm going to get that in. <laughs> Thank you. Tailback from the University of Iowa. Go Hawkeyes. BC Lions, James Butler. How you doing? I'm good. It, it, it feels, it feels, I, I honestly, I haven't heard anyone say that to me. So it, it, it feels, mm-hmm. you know, it feels, it feels That's good. That's good. You deserve it, it, man. You deserved yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, he's Thank joined you. us here in the Go Go Sports studio. He's a podcaster himself. So he's checking out our wares here. <laughs> uh, and we'll be checking you out on Sunday. Yes, sir. First Lions home playoff game in six years. And we were telling you the first playoff game in this city for five years between the three big teams. It's been a long time. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm excited that we, that we can bring one back to Vancouver, back to BC Place. You know, don't got to worry about any weather, or anything like that. You know, what I'm saying, <laughs> come dress nice. Hopefully, the the bowl will be closed so we can make it nice and loud. So, it should be it should be a great atmosphere. Uh, so, a thousand yards. You finished second in the league in rushing, a mere 28 yards behind Kadeem Carey of the Calgary Stampeders, and you were telling us. You knew you'd have a shot. You weren't mm-hmm. sure what kind of a shot Friday in Winnipeg because of uh, well, coach wanted to preserve you for the playoff game. Exactly. I knew I knew I was going to have an opportunity. I knew exactly how much I would play. I just didn't know exactly how many opportunities that would that would you know that that that, that would come obviously. And, and and coach knew too. Like they like no one was um was shy about it. He was like, hey, we're gonna try. You know, if, if it happens, awesome. But just so you know, like. If you need a yard in the fourth quarter, we're not going to put you back in. And <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we're not going to put you back in. So I understood, and I knew I just had to go out there and and do what I kept, whatever I could for for that record. But honestly, like it was it was just cool to see you know how you know much they meant to me and 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 just you know just my role now is just like they said we're more we want we want you like healthy for the playoffs. You know mm-hmm. I, you know individual accolades are amazing, but what really matters is you know these next three three four weeks. We know mm-hmm. football players' careers can be uh, shorter than in other sports. You're 27, and you're a thousand yard rusher. You got the goosebumps when you when you heard that. <laughs> um, I mean, you like so many guys that come into this league from south of the border. You, mm-hmm. You've had to grind out your career a little bit. So is That's that right. is that why that gives you goosebumps? Because as you bounce from CFL to XFL to NFL. Cam, you you're never sure when you're gonna gonna get enough looks to even have that chance to prove yourself. Exactly, and just being you know being able to do that at 27, and you know a lot of people don't know my story when it comes to the CFL because I remember I had a shot in 2019 yeah. with Saskatchewan, and and it was crazy. You know, me and Morrow, you know, we, we both came in the same year, and they had just signed William Powell, and they had like Marcus Dickpen too, so they had two great veteran running backs, and then obviously you know two pretty good rookies too, and like you know me and. You know, Morrow were going back and forth, and and Morrow had a great camp, and and like I had a decent camp, but I I just knew I didn't make enough plays to mm-hmm. to really separate myself. But I remember leaving, you know, Regina, and I was like, I'm my career is over. You know, like I can't make it in the CFL. What makes you think I can make it in the NFL? Like there was no XFL, there was no other you know leagues at the point, and I was like, this 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 could be it. Like and 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 I I knew I wasn't coming back to Canada. I was I was I was I was done with Canada. I was like, that's. That ship has sailed. I, I just convinced myself, like, you know, that game's not made for me. You know, it's a passing league. You know, every excuse you can make possibly make to try to, like, you know. to Make sense of it. Yeah, yes. make sense of it. Yeah. Make sense of, of, of why, you know, it just didn't work out. But then to come back up here to BC and, and have the opportunity I did last year, then come this year and, and was do, it, do, what I, do what I was able to do is just – it's it's like a full circle moment. That's why like like when you said that, I had, like, the biggest smile because, like, it was – it's just crazy to think about. I'm still, like, trying to – you know, just re like really realize what I've done it was pretty cool. Cause I remember I was talking to I forget who it was. I was talking to somebody on on TSN, just saying like how impressive it is to run for a thousand yards in this league. And I like now I was just thinking like you know that's like that should be like normal. Like you know what I'm saying? But like it's not a passing league. It's you know what I'm saying. You, you the most carries like a, a large game for a running back is like 15 carries or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And like. It's three down, so it's not like we're just grinding out, you know, the the, the ball every play. So it's just like the more people tell me, it's like I, I don't really realize the like the magnitude of what it. Hundred yard games here are a big deal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. it's 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 really cool. It's a really cool, um, you know, chinking my armor. So no one can ever take that away from me. Like you said, being able to do that at twenty seven too is is also really cool. So for some facts here, Jamal Morrow six hundred and sixty six yards rushing this year. So he's four. Oh, there you go. <laughs> three touchdowns. He was not even half seven. Uh, you're one of three thousand yard rushers in the CFL. And as you were saying, but it's not just this league, James. Like the carry the male tailback yes, sir. is a dying breed out there. One hundred percent. You led the league with two hundred and ten carries. You played seventeen games. How much did it mean to you to be dependable? 
It meant it meant a lot. I I, I like uh. I I love this song. It, it just says like this game's this game's about durability. It's about who can last the longest. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like just being able to. And honestly, I'm sad I didn't play all 18. Like I, I tried mm-hmm. to play all 18, but you know they they held me for that one and said like, hey, we want you for these two instead of just you know trying to you know grind out all three. So it it, it feels it feels good. And then um, also being able to catch the ball as much as I did too was 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 also really awesome. So just being able to. And but still feel good and like be able to continue playing my best ball toward the end of the year, which I'm really happy about. Kind of like, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like last year. And it sucks because last year, you know, I was playing my best ball, then, you know, the season was over. So now this year, you know, hopefully just can continue playing my best ball and then, you know, take it into the playoffs. Were you always used as a dual threat? Uh, because we we see that, at, you know, as, as your game here and it's so uh-huh. useful as a as a back in the CFL. But was that, was that always your calling card? It's like I, I've always wanted to show people that I could, you mm-hmm. know, not all offenses I was in or, right. or places I was in would, would really glorify that. So it was okay. You know what I'm saying? I knew I knew what I had in my back pocket. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I, I like – in the off season, it's kind of hard to train as a running back, so I just kind of train as a receiver, you know. So I try to do as much receiver stuff as I possibly can. But uh, I really pride myself on, on on being able to catch the ball. Like if I drop one pass in practice, like I had, I'm I'm livid. Like <laughs> give me, it's good. Give me, give me, give me a while. I'll, yeah. I'll be, I'll come back. You know what I'm saying? But um, but yeah. So just being able to be a dual threat and like just um, growing up, it was always like the more you can do. You know, I, I grew up with a with a, a little league coach that the first thing he taught me was to block. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I was I was running for, you know, as many yards, you know, my and my best friend was a fullback, was also his son. And he was like and then I would block for his son, but I would I wouldn't really care. I would just, you know, try to get in front of him. And he's like <laughs> Coach's he's, son. Yeah, too. Oh, you, know, no. you know what I'm saying? So like but he was so hard on me, he's like, if you don't block, you're not gonna be able to play, you know, you're not gonna get able to play once you get older and I was like all right, let me like actually try to take blocking seriously. So, so yeah, it's always just been for me. It's more you can do. Pass protection in the CFL is key. It was thirty-seven catches one year at Nevada, Blake, and then he went to Iowa, where they don't <laughs> they don't really split the back out much and throw it all over the no. field at all. I so couldn't even tell you how many, how many catches you had. That? Four catches at the <laughs> University of Iowa, <laughs> thirty-seven and that to might four. Have led the running backs uh, <laughs> that year. But here's the thing, James. Uh, last year, uh, Blake and I bemoaned this a little bit, and that was the Lions' play calling and the fact that. A running game just didn't seem to get there last year. At one point, I heard Sorry. Coach Campbell say, "Our running game is the short passing game." The uh, <laughs> no, he did. That. I remember that too. Uh, did you, know, you take it personally? You know, you... No. What I took most personally, I think it was probably like week like four or five, and I think uh, JJ, he's the one who told me he's like, "Hey, you know, like Mike Riley has more rushing yards than you," <sighs> and that really like cut me deep and like that that that's a really like but yeah and then I did hear uh you know uh coach talking about the short game it's like you know the little you know uh out routes and and bubble passes are the, are the run mm-hmm. game too but yeah and it and it did and obviously like it didn't just hurt me it also hurt the guys up front you know what I'm saying we all we talk about it you know we see it but um but so what's we, been the difference like why has it been successful for you this year I would say it's a lot of the same guys as last year you know what I'm saying we're kind of meshed together and like I felt like last year we were, we were still trying to figure it out so much, like the run game, like inside zone, outside zone, you know, mid zone, gap. And we just didn't really know. Then we, like, got really good at inside zone. So we were just inside zone last year. And, like, that's what, that was, like, our bread and butter. But then this year, we, like, obviously we, we kind of built off that, you know, going from inside zone to moving to outside zone and the gap play. So just – Having the same guys, you know, the same lingo, same language. Like we've all, like we've been in these meetings for you know over a year now. The same, the same guys. So it's just we were just, we just gelled a lot better. And then obviously for me, I felt like coming into year two, I kind of knew more to expect than you know year one. Year one, I'm just trying to. I remember I always write these goals down in the beginning of the year. Like last year, my goal was make the team, make the team, and have fun. And then this year, it was I, I, I just shot for the moon, but I was like, you know run for a thousand yards and score 10 plus touchdowns like if it happens it happens if it doesn't you know what I'm saying I'm, I'm gonna shoot shoot for the moons you know and and for stars well but, seven um, rushing touchdowns <laughs> one per game the rest of the way here you get to yeah, 10 exactly <laughs> I mean I, I've scored 10 plus if you add every the catches the, yeah accumulation but but yeah so it was just like just always I try to make these goals and and if they're they sound crazy I feel like then I made really good goals was it any different running um with work as the pivot versus Big play VA was big it play, the same? I would I would say I would say it's pretty much the same because yeah. I feel like they both can do things with their legs. Like yeah, both both, mm-hmm. both of them. Like Roy was the first quarterback I've seen take a a, 
a QB sneak play 50 yards and, <laughs> and, outrun, and outrun a DB. And then VA is the first QB I see to jump over a, a DB who's standing straight up. You know what I'm saying? So, like, they both can do crazy things with their with their feet. Mm, well, if you get carry this Sunday, that's all that's going to matter. Right? Exactly. That's, a, that's the goal. And uh, I was going to say, I know you've mentioned, uh, you know, playing here at home, BC Place, and the controlled conditions. But, you know, if you happen to get through this game, James, mm-hmm. at Winnipeg. Yeah. A Grey Cup at Regina. So, yeah. Probably some cold weather games. Yeah, that's, probably that's, some games where the tailback is going to matter a whole lot. It's that's, true. That's Canadian football for you. So you, you got know, your broom ball shoes? That's, do, you ever, do you know what broom ball <laughs> shoes look like? I do not know what broom ball shoes look <laughs> <laughs> that right. like. That's kicking it old school. Back in the old frozen tundra days of the CFL, they... The running backs would often wear broom ball shoes because broom ball's played oh, on broom ice. Ball. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And they're like suction cups on the bottom of the shoes so that when you <laughs> are running on the frozen AstroTurf right. back then, yeah. you mm-hmm. would stick to the AstroTurf. Or a you just bit. put staples in the bottom of yeah. the cleat, get you a little extra friction there. Yeah. Uh, Might have to get the little molded cleats like back in back in the mm-hmm. elementary school days. Yeah, there just you go. Screw on ones. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they'll get you set, uh, they'll get you straight in the equipment room uh, <laughs> yeah. of the BC yeah. Alliance. Hey, uh, d- tell me. We're anticipating a really big crowd mm-hmm. on Sunday for the first playoff game here in so, uh, in six years. Tell us where you think the team is at and how the team at large is looking at this opportunity. Um, we're we're excited. We know we know what's what's at stake. We you know we're glad we have a, a full week to to prepare for these guys. Obviously, you know we've seen these guys for for three for three weeks. You know what I'm saying for for three different games and three different opportunities. So we're excited. You know, obviously. Playing at BC Place is is amazing. The the I remember the crowd even against Winnipeg was it was a great crowd. And then everybody remembers the crowd against um, Edmonton Week One, and that. So you know we're seeing that the upper upper bowls is open, and like we you know we played you know as best as we can to try to get a to get a, a home playoff game. And we know how much that means for Vancouver. We know what that means for you know this team, especially come off the year we had last year. So just. It's a great opportunity, you know what I'm saying? We got 12 back. We're excited about that too, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's just like it's 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 a lot of excitement, but 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 we know that we just got to prepare. We know we're going to be facing a really good, eager, you know, uh Calgary team, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like just how we don't have to deal with, you know, weather or anything like that. They don't either, you know what I'm saying? So we're so everyone's going to be out there. Everyone's going to be out there fast. Everyone's going to be out there fresh. So it's it's going to be a really good environment. I'm excited well, for um, we're glad things didn't work out with the riders a few years ago. <laughs> it's <laughs> great too. to have you in town. Thanks for coming to visit the Go Goat Sports Studio. Appreciate this. Good luck on Sunday. Sir, thanks for having me.